All right, welcome back to another video by Firestarter Graphics and Engineering. Today we're going to discuss something a little bit new and different than CAD modeling. So, last time you remember we went over this equation and traced the green line out in SketchUp and then created an airfoil. Well now, what if we want to analyze that airfoil to get the coefficient of drag, to get the coefficient of drag pressure, and all of those things for either a high-powered rocket. Now remember, airfoils aren't just used for rocket fins. They're used for airplane wings and pretty much anything with a blade like a propeller um, or wind turbines. In this case, let's look at it from a wind turbine side and a high-powered rocket as well. So let's look at this high-powered rocket I've designed and I have built this and I have launched it and the highest I've ever achieved personally with rockets is like 10 to 20,000 feet um, however one of my teammates hit 300,000 feet the Carmen line with his rocket but that's a different story so anyways this is the rocket that I put together and built basic high-powered rocket anyways this is the fin and it has an airfoil shape and this is the shape we're going to be analyzing now it is difficult to CAD model not CAD model to cut out a fin like this exact shape and have or 3d print it and have the airfoil that you want as it follows these types of angles it's a little bit difficult to do that. It can be done and it prints funky, but it works. What these are made of are uh, quarter inch plywood. Nope. Eighth inch plywood. And then they are sanded down to create an airfoil. So very sharp trailing edges and a rounded leading edge. So this is kind of the rocket. And if we were to go to tools, component analysis, we know based on calculations what our total drag is but let's look at the fin it says it's 0 0.014 let's keep that number in mind okay so this new software is called XFLR5 you can see version 6.61 top left corner this is what we're going to use so we're going to go ahead and do module and we're going to go to direct foil design you could do others but different video different time so today we're doing direct foil design and yours will probably have this foil shown up if it's the first time using it so just uncheck show and we're going to click foil in this tab menu go to NACA or NACA or NACA foils it's going to bring up these four or five digits so we're just going to do what we did which was a 0007 meaning seven percent and we're going to use 200 panels It's going to be named. This is the name. Existing names. There's no other existing airfoils in here in the current session, so hit OK. This is what we currently look like. Now, blue on black, great song by the way, a little difficult to see, so let's uh, switch up the color and we're going to go more of a. Today I want green. Okay. So. This is our airfoil that we modeled, or close to it, in SketchUp, because we used a 7% thickness, and this should be a 7% thickness. Okay, so now we're going to click on Module and go to XFoil Direct Analysis. Brings the foil down here, says its thickness is 7%. And from there, you will notice if this is the first time you've run it, you're going to be in a different menu where it has multiple graphs. That's because, which is this. Okay. And if you double click one of them, you can change what the axes are. So, um, don't worry about that at this moment. CL versus your coefficient of drag. You could change this one for coefficient of drag versus alpha. So. Okay, but we don't have any data, so it's kind of pointless right now. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to go back to this one. 
Okay, so now we want to do analysis. In order to do that, you got to click on analysis and define it. All right, so type one is what I'm sticking with. I don't want to mess with the chord length or anything yet. That would be a type two. So I'm sticking with just plain old type one. Now, according to Open Rocket, my mock number is 0 0.50. Um, well actually that's how fast it is its top speed was half a mock I don't necessarily know if that's the mock number don't quote me on that I should know because I'm an aerospace engineer but I always forget if the mock number is the same thing as how fast you are going compared to the speed of sound which I think it is okay so we need to calculate our Reynolds number you can use an online calculator Give it the characteristic length of 122 centimeters, um, 166 meters per second for the fluid velocity, and it will calculate everything that you need. Okay, for example, if you go to Google and type in Reynolds number calculator, which I spelled wrong, you'll want to go to this one called Omni Calculator. That's the one that I like. Fluid velocity in meters, uh, characteristic. Um, linear dimension, substance is air at 15 degrees Celsius, I'm curious at 25, so depending on which one you pick, so I'm just going to go with uh, 15 and do 13 million, so in here, type 1, Reynolds number, get that in the 13 1 2 3 4 5 6 mock number right there we're gonna hit OK we don't need to worry about these right now and hit OK alright now on the right hand side you'll notice this is alpha CL etc etc you can do sequence or you can do not a sequence that just means it's gonna stay it's gonna start at whatever degrees you put here so if I put a zero Make sure this store OPP is checkmarked. If not, it's not going to show anything. And depending on what we have right now, it might not show anything. So let's just click Analyze. Okay, and it shows. If it, this was not checked, it would be empty. And then people would be really confused. And so very little data on this. I mean, very little. If we go to bottom left corner, we can see a Reynolds number, alpha, Mach number, coefficient is uh, drag is 0 0.004 so remember on open rock it was 0. Point, let's see component analysis 0 0.01 versus our 0, 0.00 now why such a difference because in open rocket these fins do not have an airfoil it's a flat edge so it's gonna have a little bit more drag okay but if we we're using this airfoil like on a wind turbine blade which this one does exist near the tip you'll have a seven percent thickness on your airfoil this is what you would get if, if you were going 166 meters per second which a wind turbine does not so please put in the correct calculations. Okay, so that's great. Gives us some uh, information, but now let's see if we were to do a sequence. Um, we're gonna start at zero and we're gonna go to 13 degrees because that's roughly where wind turbine blades like to re uh, exist and stay based on some of the data that I have calculated. So, click Sequence, and then hit Analyze. It's going to go through. Might take a moment. And then at the end, it will say some points are unconverged. That's okay, just hit Close. Now you can see all of these points. Now, the reason why I like doing a sequence, especially if you start at zero and go to th any number, like maybe five, the reason why I like doing that is because sometimes if you are just doing not a sequence and you analyze it and it doesn't show because of some error or a bug you can just run a sequence 
and as you go through here you can click on zero and it will show you what it is at zero degrees angle of attack um, you know and if you want to know what the pressure looks like as it's changing if you go down to the bottom right where it says display click pressure you see the pressure gradient and you hit animate it'll go through all of that fancy data look at that all that fanciness so this little slider bar makes it go faster okay I'm gonna turn off that and I'm gonna reset it back to zero okay now we're gonna go over to here we're gonna look at our coefficient of drag and it looks like it's roughly 0.14 for the fins not 0 0.014 but hey somewhere around here you get a coefficient of drag at certain angles um, what angle is that roughly yeah you can see 12 13 degrees starts steeping out now why is that important especially with wind turbines it looks like from 0 to 4 degrees our coefficient of drag is not changing very much so you probably get max power generation in this area and max torque but you start hitting six degrees you start getting drag and you hit 13 degrees maybe even 20 degrees you could stall the blade depending on the speed but remember this is at high speeds in fact I don't know let's do define another analysis you could calculate the Reynolds number based on your average wind speed in the area. Put it in there, do your thing, but I think what's type four? Alpha type three type two. Hmm. No, okay. One of them, I guess since Reynolds number is based off of the velocity of the wind, it already counted in there, but on wing design, you can actually input the wind speed. If you go to um, module wing and plane design, you can actually put in the wind speed. But this is a completely different video and whatnot. Um, okay back to analysis now beauty of it is you can create multiple foils and plot multiple analysis if we had a second airfoil it'd be listed right here and we can uncompress and then put another airfoil in put another airfoil do a batch analysis or just run another analysis and it would plot the second one I haven't done that yet but I mean if we were to go to Um, let's add a 2412 in here. Hit OK. It's going to be called the 2412. Alright. If we were to do analysis, define analysis, type 1, Reynolds number, we're going to do 2 million. I didn't count my zeros. And then how about a 0 0.1 Mach number? and we're going to hit OK and then if we were to analyze this one it's probably going to show it on its own separate correct but then if we go to this one you'll see how they're plotted against each other and then if you want to change the axes you just double click it and you can change it so you could do um, if you wanted to, what is this one? This one is CP versus X, but I don't remember what X is. But, yeah. So if we did this and did like CP, I gotta find it. I don't know what XCP is, but sure. but you can change things like that I just want regular coefficient of pressure
So, anyway, pretty nifty. You can go through. I do not know if you can plot two of the. Um, on this one, but if you wanted to see the other one, you just open that up and then go through, and then you can see each each one. But I don't know if you can plot. Let's see. Right click. Maybe you can. Yeah. So. Or unless you did like a batch analysis and then you hit analyze on those, you know, it's always that. But yeah, see, it didn't change anything. So, oh, but it ruined this one. I have to reanalyze that one. did here. Anyway, just some basic rundown of things. And if you wanted to, you could drag your airfoil up here, kind of get the idea of what it looks like, you know. I don't think that's, I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea or not. I just know you can move it. Doesn't know, doesn't mean it's a good idea. Anyway, that's all for today, so thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.